Hello and welcome back. In the previous videos, we have looked at MapReduce in detail. In the upcoming set of videos, we will look at the different options Hadoop provides us for loading data into HDFS. In this video, we will look at Flume in detail. In any Hadoop deployment, data analysis is only half the battle. The first big step in any Hadoop deployment is getting data into the HDFS of the Hadoop cluster. Only then you can use powerful tools like MapReduce, Pig, Hive or even statistical tools like R or SAS to perform data analysis. Some of the data sources for Hadoop clusters comes from some bulk loading processes such as databases and legacy systems and these are primarily batch loads periodically daily weekly monthly etc but what has made data really big in the recent years is that most new data is contained in high throughput streams application logs gps tracking social media updates and digital sensors all constitute fast moving streams that needs to be moved into the Hadoop distributed file system as they are generated. We have seen previously that we can load data into HDFS using commands like copy from local and put. However, this works great when you have all your data neatly packaged and ready to upload. But sources like social media, server logs, etc are creating data all the time. If that is the case, how often can you batch load data into HDFS? You could probably do daily, maybe even hourly. But whatever processing period you choose, eventually there will always be a need for getting the data sooner. In such scenarios, what you really need is a solution that can deal with streaming logs or data. Turns out there are many of them in the same boat and you are not alone in this requirement. Cloudera which is a provider of professional services for Hadoop and as well have their own distribution of Hadoop saw this need over and over while working with their customers. Flume was created to meet this need and create a standard simple robust flexible and extensible tool for data ingestion into Hadoop. A couple of other technologies similar to Flume are Facebook's Scribe and Apache or LinkedIn's Kafka. Both offer solutions to the same problem. But Flume is rapidly becoming a de facto standard for directing data streams into Hadoop. Cloudera moved control of the Flume project to the Apache Software Foundation in 2011 and is now a part of the Hadoop ecosystem. Some of us who have heard about Flume might be under the misconception that Flume is only or mainly used for server log data collection. But in reality, the use of Apache Flume is not restricted to log data aggregation. Since data sources are customizable, Flume can be used to transport massive quantities of event data including but not limited to network traffic data, social media generated data, email messages and pretty much any data source possible. We will see some of the examples later on. But what exactly is Flume? Flume is a distributed, reliable and available system for efficiently collecting, aggregating and moving high volume streaming data flows from many different sources to a centralized store. Apache Flume uses an elegant design to make data loading easy and efficient. In this video, we will describe the basics of Apache Flume and illustrate how to quickly set up Flume agents for collecting fast moving data streams and pushing the data into Hadoop's file system. We will be using Flume NG to explain the same where NG stands for new generation and is the work related to the new major revision of Flume. The architecture of Flume is based on a few core concepts. Event. An event represents a singular unit of data that can be transported by Flume 
from its point of origin to its final destination. Examples of an event can be a single log entry or maybe a tweet. It is made up of headers and a byte array body. Client. Basically, clients produce data in the form of events and transmit the events to the source. Then we have source. Source is just what it sounds like. The part of Flume that connects to a source of data and starts the data along its journey through a Flume data flow. Sources operate by gathering discrete pieces of data, translating the data into individual events and delivering it to the channel. Simply put, Flume sources listen for and consume events. Events can be anything like a tweet or a log entry. It all depends on what sources the agent is configured to use. Flume agents may have more than one source but must have at least one. And then we have channel. Channels are the mechanism by which Flume agents transfer events from their sources to their sinks. They are a transient store for these events before they are drained by the sinks. A source stores an event in the channel where it stays until it is consumed by a sink. This temporary storage allows source and sink to run asynchronously. Then we have the sink which is an interface implementation that can remove events from a channel and transmit them to the next agent in the flow or to the event's final destination. Sinks that transmit the event to its final destination are also known as terminal sinks and the Flume HDFS sink is an example of a terminal sink. And finally we have an agent. It is an independent process that acts as a container for the entire Flume data flow. It is any physical Java virtual machine running Flume that hosts Flume components such as sources, channels and sinks and thus has the ability to receive, store and forward events to their next hop destination. The same agent can run multiple sources, sinks and channels. Now with that understanding, let us look at the data flow pipeline. A flow in Flume starts from the client which produces the events such as log entries or tweets. Then you have a Flume agent. One of the components of a Flume agent is the source, which basically listens to the events being generated by the client and then consumes it. Once the source receives this event, it then delivers it to a channel. These events in the channel are then drained by a sync operating within the same agent. Events written to the channel by a source are not removed from the channel until a sync removes that event in a transaction. This allows Flume syncs to retry writes in the event of a failure in the external repository such as HDFS or maybe an outgoing network connection. For example, let's say the network between a Flume agent and a Hadoop cluster goes down. The channel will keep all the events queued until the sync can correctly write to the cluster and close its transactions within the channel. Channels allow the decoupling of sources from sinks using the familiar producer-consumer model of data exchange. When spikes in client-side activity cause data to be generated faster than what the provisioned capacity on the destination can handle, the channel size increases. This allows sources and sinks to have different performance and runtime characteristics and yet be able to effectively use the physical resources available to the system. Flume agents can be chained together by the sink of one agent to the source of another agent. This enables the creation of complex data flow topologies. Now, to quickly summarize, clients generate events, sources listen to and consume these events and delivers it to the channel. The channel acts as a transient store for these events till the sync drains the events from the channel and writes it to the destination. Now, 
we can also have multiple clients generating the events and have one or more sources listening to these events which can then be delivered to multiple channels and finally you can also have multiple sinks draining these channels with the events as well and add to this remember like we said earlier you can have one flume agent connected to another that is the sink of one agent might be the source of the next agent in the pipeline a sink is basically called a regular sink if it forwards the event to its next hop destination which is another agent or it could be a terminal sink if it forwards the event to its final destination such as HDFS so as you can see a lot of complex such data flows are possible but before we go there let us first download and set up flume go to the link shown here and then click on the Apache flume 1.5.0 bin file this link will then suggest as a mirror for download so right click and copy the link address and then launch putty as HD user so here we have used putty to connect to a virtual machine and logged in as HD user now let us do a wget of the URL from the home directory of HD user so this might take a couple of minutes to download the .gz file based on the internet speed now once the download is complete successfully let us check the file downloaded so as you can see you have the apache bin 1.5.0 .gz file so let us unzip this file now let us check the directory contains again so you can see that there is a folder apache flume for the sake of convenience i'll just rename that folder to flume and let us check the contents of this folder so as you can see you have the standard folders bin conf lib etc let us check what is there in the bin folder so you have a file called as flume-ng which is basically a binary executable similar to the executable Hadoop that we have been using all this while now let us quickly check how to use this file so let us type bin slash flume dash ng and then help so it basically lists out the various commands that are possible with the flume ng executable file now with this we are now ready to set up and configure and subsequently run a flume agent but for that let us spend some time going over how to configure a flume agent and what are the things that we need to consider when we configure a flume agent now we configure the details of a flume agent using a simple java property file consisting of key value pairs in a hierarchical setting the configuration file enables you to perform the following tasks that is specifying the definition of the flow configuring the individual components such as source channel and sync it also allows you to add multiple flows in an agent and then it also allows you to configure multiple agents in the flow and configuring flow fanout which is basically configuring multiple channels for the sources to deliver the events to now not all of these tasks are mandatory for a flume agent but at a minimum tasks one and two are mandatory the other tasks are required depending on the requirement and the complexity now with that we come to the end of this video we looked at the flume architecture in detail and how to set up flume in the next video we will expand our foundation of flume and we will look at how to set up a configuration file for extracting log entries from a web server log file thank you for watching